Whether you're a casual fan of esports or a diehard one, or if you've never even heard of them before but know about video games and their broader culture, you're probably aware of the fact that among professional, meaning salaried and signed to an organization, video game players, a minute fraction of them identify as female. Comment sections and Reddit threads will be quick to tell you why. Video essay over, question answered. Except, as I'd hope you can imagine, it's a bit more complicated than that. But for those of us who encounter these people on the regular and wish they had a solid argument prepared, or even for those curious on why this phenomenon exists, let's talk about why women are so underrepresented on the esports stage. Stop! Like most stellar arguments, this one is going to start with a few disclaimers. Namely that, while there are few women in the esports industry, there aren't zero. In fact, many women have broken through the barriers we're about to talk about, and not just as players, but as broadcast talent, coaches, observers, managers, and more. None of what I put forth here is meant to diminish those accomplishments, and in fact, it should only serve to highlight their achievements more. Second quick disclaimer, though I use the term women in this video, the truth is that any demographic but cisgendered men struggles to see adequate representation among professional esports players, and most of the problems I outline here are faced by non-binary, transgender, and other marginalized gender gamers as well. My research focuses specifically on bringing women into the game based on my own personal experiences as a video gamer and a traditional sports player, but it is undeniably an important cause to solve these issues, not just for women, but for anybody hoping to be comfortable in the gaming space. With those out of the way, let's get started with the main reason why there are less women in esports, a reason that me and many Reddit users actually agree on. Noting that this idea that many gamers have, the perception that few women play video games, especially at a high level, comes from anecdotal experience and isn't rooted in statistical analysis or surveying, and tends to be skewed due to the tendency of female gamers to hide their identities or masquerade as men to avoid harassment. That being said, video games, on average, especially the games that tend to make good esports titles like first-person shooter games or multiplayer online battle arenas, do tend to have much greater male populations than female. It follows, then, that with less women gamers, there would be less female esports professionals. Video essay over, question answered, except once again it is not that simple, because when you look at proportions, it doesn't add up. No matter what figure you use to represent the amount of female gamers in a given sample, they never near the figure we see of salaried esports professionals by gender, despite 30% of female respondents to the State of Online Gaming report stating that they were interested in a professional gaming career. In a different Statista survey measuring esports interest by gender, 14% of surveyed females responded that they were at least casual fans of esports. So the numbers are there, as is the interest, meaning that women's smaller population of gamers can't be the sole reason for that makeup of professionals. One solution on how to grow this number would of course be to get more women involved in video games and esports, but even then that doesn't address the disproportionality. So let's talk about why that is. It's been a big year for women's sports. Women's collegiate basketball, guided by the star power of Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Paige Beckers, and their corresponding millions of dollars of NIL deals, has reached record viewership during the 2023 March Madness tournament, with some showdowns drawing more viewership than regular season NBA games, for example. Women's Collegiate Volleyball set a new attendance record at 92,000 fans in August of 2023 and is seeing major increases in participation at the middle and high school levels. With the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics on the horizon, Deloitte projects that for the first time and in a 300% increase in its valuation three years ago, women's sports are projected to eclipse $1 billion in total revenue. But what accounts for this change? Having media personalities to root for certainly helps, but Caitlin Clark alone didn't bring 18 million viewers to the NCAA championship. She needed the support of major networks, broadcast teams, and corporations like Nike backing her up. People used to say that women's sports were unpopular because the women were bad, but the second their events were given the same treatment, marketing, and funding as men, they drew in record numbers. It's crazy. Not everyone can be Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes, but it goes to show that when you put in the right marketing, the viewership will follow. But what does this have to do with video games beyond me wanting to put women's basketball in the video? Let's take a look at some video game advertisements throughout time. Admittedly, these are cherry-picked examples, but even those lacking overt sexism in the 20th century and early 2000s tend to have one thing in common. Women are typically not the target audience. Only recently have we seen the inclusion of women in video game advertisements at any large scale, and even then some franchises remain entirely devoted to their male player bases anyway. <clears throat> anyway, this is a major reason for why women play video games less. They simply aren't marketed towards us, and marketing is a very powerful tool. The idea of female-only leagues is controversial, but what they represent is more important than who is and who isn't allowed to participate. 
Leagues like Game Changers show a concentrated effort into the marketing and investment in the idea of women in esports and provide a stage for already successful women to make their mark, hopefully in an environment free from the sorts of harassment they receive in other spaces too. In short, marketing and investment is a powerful tool, and aspiring female esports professionals can benefit from corporations, gaming companies, and esports leagues acknowledging their potential and giving them a shot. Especially under the guidance of positive representation, you thought I was done talking about Caitlin Clark, but she's here again, there's no telling what kinds of viewership and therefore what kinds of revenue these events can bring in. So games aren't marketed towards women, and there aren't many designated opportunities for them, but who's to say they wouldn't blow the chance once they got there? After all, women and men are biologically different. Who's to say the biological advantage men have in traditional sports doesn't carry over to the digital sphere, too? Esports, after all, requires reaction speed, spatial awareness, and a competitive drive. If there wasn't a biological difference, why else would there be fewer numbers of women at the professional tier? Women and men do have some differences when it comes to video games, and that's individual gender preferences and motivations for playing. But preferences alone can't dictate performance, and it's shown that women, despite stereotypes, are not less competitive than men. A new study by the University of Arizona finds that women enter competitions at the same rate as men if they have the chance to share their winnings with losers in some way, demonstrating that while women are just as competitive as men, this competition manifests differently, where their drive is higher when they have a better chance at controlling the outcomes. Excluding the fact that competition registration alone isn't indicative of competitive spirit in entirety, this result would fall in line with rising rates of female CEOs at Fortune 500 companies. Only now do women finally have the opportunity and chance to make a difference in the workforce, and so it follows that their numbers are rising. What else? A study found that, when controlling for time played, men and women level up or advance at the same rate. Using a mixed effect model, one researcher proved that female players advance through MMOs at least at the same speed as male gamers, noting in addition that, quote, as researchers, they believe it is unproductive to document gender differences and simply attribute them to playstyle or preference without probing the source of such differences, as doing so may lead to hardened gender stereotypes. Instead, research should place emphasis onto the context and conditions under which these differences or lack thereof may occur. With that in mind, let's talk about the most important thing to consider when we look at male and female differences and biological performance, something called stereotype threat. To quote a team of researchers investigating its effects on a sample of high-level female soccer players, according to stereotype threat theory, when a negative stereotype about a group's ability is made relevant in a test-taking situation, target individuals may fear being evaluated based on the stereotype. This evaluative threat creates an extra pressure that hampers their performance. Both this study and another conducted on golfers, male and female, corroborates the role of stereotype threat theory in performance. When certain groups remain aware of stereotypes about them, i.e. that male golfers are worse putters than women or that women are less athletic than men, significant declines in performance occurred. Another researcher focusing on the experience of women who eventually quit getting video games puts forth a life cycle of sorts in which female gamers are introduced to a game by their friends, gain confidence in their skills and venture out into competition with randoms, and then inevitably quit due to the harassment they face. Imagine that, an onslaught of other players enforcing the idea of a negative stereotype regardless of its validity, compounded with the fact that, controlling for skill, women are less confident in their gaming abilities than men, it's no surprise that they perform worse and drop out at higher levels than men. A word I've been trying to avoid this whole time, misogyny, runs rampant throughout the entire analysis of why women are being less represented than men at the highest level of esports. Ultimately, it's the culture of video gaming and esports keeping women out, the harassment that women face in voice calls, text chats, Discord servers, and Twitch chats. But this goes without saying, I'd hope, so I've left it here until the end. Ultimately, misogyny is to blame for the many other reasons I've outlined today. It is the catalyst in creating the environment that keeps women out of games if they start them, and the reason why video games aren't marketed towards women in the first place. It's the driving force behind the comments that are left on my 2,000 view videos and the logic behind underfunding female competitions before they're even given the chance to take off. I'd hope that of all the arguments I need to prove, or of all the claims that I need to back up, this is one that can go without saying. Any organization, competition, or team can benefit from striving towards equal representation, and esports are no different, especially given the number of women who already love and care about video games. I hope that today you've learned a little bit about why things stand at present in terms of the disproportionality we see, because with greater understanding, we can start working towards solutions. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.